Hello students, welcome to the third part of our lectures on chapter 4 of accountancy for non-profit organization and partnership accounts. In this chapter, we are discussing retirement or death of a partner. In the previous parts, we have seen the basic small small details that need treatment in the accounting books when a partner gets retired. For example, we talked about calculating the new profit sharing ratio or the gaining ratio. We talked about calculating the amount of goodwill that is to be given to the retiring partner and the journal entries for that. We talked about making revaluation of assets and liabilities and then we talked about making adjustments for the accumulated profits and losses. Finally, we also saw how do we make entries for the amount due to the retiring partner. We either make the payment fully in cash or we do not make it fully in cash, we transfer it to the loan account of the retiring partner or we do a combination of the two. We make some payment in cash at the same time when he is retiring and then we transfer the balance to the loan account and thereafter we make the payment for the loan account. So all these things now have to be summed up together and seen in a particular comprehensive question. That was our promise from the last part that in the next part we will discuss two very good comprehensive questions that will strengthen your understanding of the accounting treatment for retirement of a partner. So let us quickly jump into the question and understand how do we make treatment for all these things. In our question, we have Ashish, Suresh and Lokesh whose profit sharing ratio is 532. Their balance sheet on 31st March 2017 is given to us. In the balance sheet, we have these assets, take a look at them. Then we have these liabilities, we have this reserve fund also, remember the reserves are to be written off unless otherwise stated and then we have sundry creditors and outstanding expenses. Now let us look at the scenario, what is happening in this firm. In this firm, we have Suresh getting retired, always try to remember which partner was it in terms of sequence of their ratio. So we had Ashish. Suresh and Lokesh, the ratio was 532. Suresh is getting retired, which means his share was 3 by 10 in the firm. So, Suresh is getting retired. Also, notice here that Suresh is getting retired on 30th June. Then, on his retirement, certain things are being agreed upon. The first thing is stock is to be valued at 172, furniture and fittings are to be valued at 80,000, profit share of Suresh till the date of his retirement because he is getting retired in the middle of the year. This is another new catch that we have put in this question. The partner is getting retired in the middle or somewhere in the middle of the year. So we have to calculate the partner's profit or loss for that particular period as we had discussed in the first part that if the partner is getting retired in the middle year during the year, we have to calculate the profit and loss for that particular duration. So here the duration will be April, May and June so for three months for which the partner was there in the partnership, we have to give him the profit share for those particular months. So that has to be calculated on the basis of firm's last year profit which is 2 lakh. Thereafter, an amount of 10,000 due from Mr. Deepak who was a debtor was doubtful and a provision for the same was required. So, we have to make a provision for doubtful debts for 10,000. Goodwill of the firm is valued at 2 lakh. Suresh was paid 40,000 immediately, remember this and the balance was transferred to his loan account. Ashish and Lokesh have decided to share the future profits in the ratio of 3 is to 2. So, whenever you do a question like this, a big question like this, you read the adjustments carefully, you try to keep them in mind and you keep coming back to them so that you do not forget anything. It is very common these questions 
that students tend to forget certain things, certain adjustments. So you have to make sure that you are thorough with all the adjustments. Then you see what are you required to do. You are required to prepare a revaluation account, capital account and the balance sheet of the firm. Right? So let us go to these things one by one. Let us prepare the revaluation account first. For revaluation account, we will look at the adjustments and see where the assets or liabilities increased or decreased. So stock has to be valued at 1,72,000. Earlier stock was 185. It means stock's value is getting reduced by 13,000. So in the revaluation account, we have to show a stock here because its value has got reduced. Furniture and fittings were to be valued at 80,000, which were earlier for 77,000 their value has increased. So whenever we get a benefit, we record it on the credit side of revaluation account, right? Now, this is another thing related to assets and liabilities. This is basically a provision that we need to cre create, a provision which is not there earlier. A provision is usually a liability. So you treat it as a liability. You have to create a liability. When you create a liability, you show it on the debit side of the revaluation account. This is how we have shown it here. There was nothing else related to assets or liabilities. So we balance the account and we find that there is a gap of 20,000 here, which is basically the loss that all the partners will have to bear in their old ratio of 5, 3, 2. So this is our revaluation account in this question. It was a simple short account. This has given us a loss of 20,000 which has been uh, no, given to or debited to the partners in 532, their old ratio. Now we'll go to prepare the capital account. While preparing the capital account, first of all, write down the balances of the partners, which was given to us in the balance sheet initially. We have to write this balance in the capital account here. Then write down the revaluation profit or loss. So we had a loss of 1064. From there, it will come to here, come to the debit side of the partners and we'll show the loss as 1064 on the debit side of the partners. Having done that, we should distribute whatever reserves or accumulated profits or losses we have. So if you look at the balance sheet, in this balance sheet, we had one reserve. This reserve will have to be given to the partners. Right? This will go to the other side. All, you can also remember these things with a cross perspective. If the reserve is here, this will go to the capital account on that side, which is the credit side of the partner's capital account. So now take a look at this. Reserve fund is here. The total reserve fund was of 1,80,000, which is now being distributed to the partners in their old ratio, which is 532. Having done that, now, First of all, we have to calculate the retiring partner share of profit for the particular number of months for which he was there. So if you see the adjustment, it says that the profit for that particular period will be calculated on the basis of last year's profit. Last year's profit is 2 lakh. Right? So if the firm earned 2 lakh for the whole of last year, and if we assume the same rate of profit for this year, how much can the firm earn in three months? So if you look at the working notes, we can find out the profit share here. 2 lakh is the total profit. You first of all divide or multiply it by 3 upon 12 because out of 12 months, now we have to calculate the profit for 3 months only. So 3 by 12 will become 1 fourth. So this will become 50,000. Then you have to multiply it with the share of the partner, which is 3 by 10. So 50,000 into 3 by 10 becomes 15,000. This is the share of the profit for the particular number of months for which the partner was there in the firm. 15,000. How do, did we get it? We multiplied previous year's profit with the number of months, three months for which the partner was there in the firm and divided by 12, right? This is 12. Then we multiplied the resultant amount with the share of the retiring partner and we got 15,000. Now this 15,000 will be given to Suresh, who is the retiring partner with the name of PNL suspense account. We use the name of PNL suspense account 
because since the retirement is being done in the middle of the year, PNL account has not been prepared yet. So we debit the PNL suspense account for that meanwhile. Later on, we'll make adjustments with the gaining partners. Right now, we make it with the PNL suspense account and credit the retiring partners account here. Thereafter, we have to make the calculation for goodwill of the retiring partner. Now, take a look at the adjustments given. For the adjustments in the for the goodwill, we had an amount of two lakh as the firm's goodwill. Two lakh was the firm's goodwill. What will be the share of the retiring partner? Three by ten was a share. So two lakh into three by ten gives you sixty thousand, which is the share of the retiring partner. This will be given to him by the gaining partners and we'll have to calculate the gaining ratio for that by subtracting the old share from the new share. When we did this for Ashish, we found 1 by 10. When we did this for Lokesh, we found it 2 by 10. So the ratio becomes 1 is to 2, which means this amount of 60,000 will be given to the retiring partner, which is Suresh by the gaining partners Ashish and Lokesh in the ratio of 1 is to 2. So if you divide 60,000 into 1 is to 2, you get 20,000 and 40,000. So 20,000 will be given by Ashish and 40,000 will be given by Lokesh. Now remember, since Suresh is getting this amount, he has to be credited. But since Ashish and Lokesh are paying this to him, their accounts have to be debited with the same amounts. So you debit Ashish by 20,000 because this is what he paid or he has to pay to Suresh and you debit Lokesh by 40,000 because this is what he has to pay to Suresh and you do this with the name of Suresh's capital account. We transferred the balance, then we distributed the reserve, then we showed the loss of the revaluation account here, then we found the profit of the retiring partner for the particular months which he was there in the partnership. Then we gave his share of goodwill by debiting the gaining partners. Having done everything, now first of all we have to find out the amount due to the retiring partner. So add this and add whatever is, was present here, subtract and you find the gap to be 5,38,000. The total gap was 5,38,000 because the total of the credit side was 544 and here we had only 6,000. Now, so we have to make a payment of 5,38,000. But the partners decided to pay 40,000 only right now and to transfer the balance into the loan account of the retiring partner. So that is what we have done here. We have written 40,000 with cash account and the rest of the amount which is 4,98,000 as Suresh's loan account. This is how we have disposed of the amount due to the retiring partner in this question by transferring 40,000 from the cash account and by transferring the rest to the loan account. Having done this, we'll just find out the balances of the remaining partners, which comes out to be 780 for Ashish and 337,000 for Lokesh. Having done all of this, we'll go on to prepare the balance sheet of the firm. In the balance sheet, remember, you have to show the updated values, the changed values in the land, building, plant, machinery, whatever changed, whatever has changed because of reconstitution has to be shown at the changed values. So if you remember the revaluation account, what all had changed? Stock and furniture had changed, right? Furniture has increased, earlier it was 77, now it is 80, stock has reduced, right? Also, Provision for doubtful debts had to be created. So having made adjustments for all these and then also remember to make adjustment for the cash. Earlier we had 1,21,000 out of which 40,000 has been paid to the retiring partner which leaves us with 81,000 as the cash balance, right? Then PNL suspense account as the amount which we paid to the retiring partner for the profit share of the particular year has to be shown here on the asset side of the balance sheet. Thereafter, 
we show the balance CDs of the remaining partners, we show the loan amount of the retiring partner and the other liabilities which in this question remained unchanged and then you balance out the balance sheet which should come out to be equal. So this is how we make adjustments for all these things that we have learned till now and prepare the comprehensive statements including revaluation, capital account and balance sheet. I hope you were able to understand this. Now we'll go a step further. Sometimes the remaining partners decide to change their capitals. They do not want to keep their capitals in their previous you know, ra ratios or relationships. They want to change their own relationships. They want to make adjustment to, to their capitals. So that is called a topic of adjusting the partner's capital account or adjustment of partner's capital account. This might happen sometimes when the partners decide that they want to change their capital, they want to change the relation existing among them or between them because now since the entire partnership firm is getting reconstituted, why not change our existing relationship also by either increasing one of the partner's capitals and reducing some of the other partner's capitals so that they come to a different terms as they have agreed now. Right? So whenever there is a situation like this, whenever there is an adjustment in the capital, usually one of the partners or one or more of the partners will have to bring some extra cash to increase their capital in the new firm, while others might have to take some cash back with them to reduce their capital as per the new agreement. Right? So whenever uh, there is a situation like this, we pass some journal entries when there is an excess capital which the partners have to withdraw right they have to reduce their capital so they'll take some cash back with them so what entry do we pass for that simple we credit the cash account because they are taking cash back with them so cash or bank account will be credited and the partner's capital account will be debited while if the case is reversed if the partners are supposed to bring back cash to the firm to increase their capital you debit the cash account and you credit the partner's capital account right so now let us take a look at a question to understand how it is done in a comprehensive question so in our question we have mohit Neeraj and Sohan who are partners in a firm sharing profits according to their capitals. So now let us take a look at the capitals first. Their capitals are 80,000, 40,000, 40,000. So their ratio should be 8 is to 4 is to 4 or if you reduce them you will get a share of 2 is to 1 is to 1. This is their profit sharing ratio right in the ratio of their capitals. This is their balance sheet and here on the liability side we have a journal reserve as well which is to be written off obviously otherwise if, if there is something else stated in the question. Then Neeraj decides to retire from the firm and the following adjustments are agreed upon. Building appreciated by 20%, provision for bad debts to be increased to 15%. Now, debtors are for 20,000. If you calculate 15 percent on 20,000, you will get 3,000, right? So, provision for bad debts has to be made for 3,000, but they are already existing at 1,000, which means from 1,000, now they have to be made for 3,000, which means that the provision has to be increased, right? So, keep that in mind while preparing the revaluation account machinery is to be depreciated by 20 percent and then we have goodwill which is valued at 72,000. Then the capital of the new firm is fixed at 120. The partners, the remaining partners have decided that going forward in the new firm the total capital will be 120, right? So this 120 will obviously be adjusted among the remaining partners which are Mohit and Sohan because Neeraj is getting retired. So, we will look at that once we are preparing the capital account. Let us first prepare the revaluation account. Remember there are three things for the revaluation account. Building appreciated, provision to be increased, machinery to be depreciated. In the revaluation account since building appreciated this will go here 
since machine depreciated this will come here and since provision which is a liability is increasing this will also come on the debit side. After that you find out the balances, you find the gap, it comes out to be a profit of 8000, you distribute it in the old ratio of 211, right? So that gives a profit of 4000 to Mohit, 2000 to Neeraj and 2000 to Sohan. Now let us go to the preparation of capital accounts. As we did in the previous question, first transfer the balances, 80, 40 and 40. Then transfer the revaluation profit or loss whatever there was. So in this case there was a profit of revaluation, we will transfer that here. Then if there are any reserves, transfer the reserve, that particular reserve to the capital account. In this question there was only one reserve which was journal reserve. This will come here in their old ratio, right? After transferring the reserves, transferring the revaluation profit and then transferring the balance we have to make adjustment for the goodwill of the retiring partner. So if you look at the adjustment, the goodwill of the retiring partner will be calculated from this. This is the firm's total goodwill of 72,000. This will be given to Neeraj in his share, which was 1 by 4, because the overall profit sharing ratio was 2 is to 1 is to 1. So 1 by 4 of 72,000 will be 18,000, right? This 18,000 will be given to Neeraj but who will give it to Neeraj? Remember, this it is the gaining partners. Since in this question, there is no information about the new profit sharing ratio, we will assume the old ratio existing between the remaining partners as their gaining ratio. And remember again, since the old ratio was 2 is to 1 is to 1 and Neeraj has got retired. So now we have Mohit and Sohan remaining. So their ratio will become 2 is to 1. This, is, this will also work as their gaining ratio. So 18,000 from this is Neeraj's share which will be given to him by Mohit and Sohan in 2 is to 1. So 12,000 is given by Mohit, 6,000 is given by Sohan and these amounts will be debited from their account here, 12 and 6 by the name of Neeraj because they are giving it to Neeraj. Having done all of this, we will find out the amount due to the retiring partner. The retiring partner's total of the credit side was 65,000. There was nothing on the debit side, so his balance comes out to be 65,000. Now since this was a question of adjustment of capitals, there is a particular way of doing it that will help you to simplify your calculation. What do we do? We write down the balances of all the partners first of all right? Then we transfer these balances on the credit side and write them as balance BD. You just have to transfer these balances from there here to there. You know how to find these balances. Subtract the total of that side from this side. You find the balance. This goes here as balance BD. Now, first of all, make the payment or whatever is to be done to the retiring partner. 65,000 is being paid to the retiring partner through bank we have sorted out the account for the retiring partner. Now for the remaining partners, they decided to keep their capitals as 1,20,000, right? This 1,20,000 will be kept in their new ratio as I have already told you. Let us also take a look at the working notes. In the working notes, the total new capital of the firm which is 1,20,000 will be shared among Mohit and Sohan in their new ratio which is 2 is to 1, right? So 120 will become 80 for Mohit and 40 for Sohan. Now you have to check what is their existing balance. If you look at the capital account, the existing balance of Mohit is 82,000 while for Sohan it is 41,000 while according to the new agreement they have to keep it as 80 and 40 which is very simple. Mohit needs to keep 80,000 while he already has 82,000. What will he do? He will take away his 2,000 which is extra in the firm. Sohan needs to keep 40,000 while he already has 41,000. He will also take away 1,000. Both of them will withdraw their respective excess amounts which will be shown in their capital accounts here by bank account. Mohit takes back 2,000. 
Sohan takes back 1000. In case there was a reverse situation which means a partner had lesser capital which he or she is required to keep in future, they would have to bring cash which would have been shown here. Having shown this amount which these partners have to take back, they have to withdraw. Now we just simply write down their new balances which is 80 and 40 and we complete the capital account. Right? Having done that, we have to prepare the balance sheet and as we have already learned in the balance sheet, we have to show the adjusted or the new values of all the assets which changed on reconstitution. Having shown the assets or liabilities at their changed values, we have to show the capitals as per the new agreement. We have to also remember that in this case, the existing partners also either bring cash or withdraw cash. So, we have to make the adjustment for cash balance or bank balance very carefully. If you look at the question, in the question we had 14,000 as cash in the bank. Out of this, 65,000 was paid to Neeraj. 2,000 was withdrawn by Mohit. 1,000 was withdrawn by Sohan. So basically, a total of 68,000 was withdrawn from the bank, whereas there was only 14,000. So what does that result in? That result in an overdraft of 14,000. There was a balance of 14,000 and we took away 68,000. That left us with an overdraft of 54,000, which we have also shown by a way of preparing a bank account where we've shown the balance of 14,000, we've shown all the withdrawals and then we've shown the remaining balance which is basically a credit balance that is an overdraft. That completes the balance sheet for us, right? So remember while you are adjusting the capitals of the remaining partners, you have to see how much capital they already have after making all the adjustments and then you have to see what capitals are there to be kept in the new firm and then what is the difference? Which partner has to withdraw? Which partner has to bring amounts to make their capitals equivalent as per their new agreement? Having done that, always pay attention to the cash or bank balance. Do not make mistake there. Remember to make adjustment for the amount being paid to the retiring partner and also the adjustments that these remaining partners are making to make their capitals adjusted. This was a very good comprehensive question to let you understand the all, entire nuances of retirement of a partner. In the next video, we'll use these learnings into another different scenario where a partner dies. So what do we do when a partner dies? How do we make adjustments in the books of accounts? That will be our topic for the next video. I hope you were able to understand today's lecture well. This was it from today. Thank you.